ברוכים הבאים לדקדוק דקות. This grammar video is on the assimilated noon. But before we get to the assimilated noon, we have to review the weak letters. Pause the tape for a moment and write down the four weak letters. Okay, good. Now I want to make sure you got them right and I want to give you a little mnemonic device to remember them. The four weak letters are Yod, Vav, Nun, and He. They also spell Yona, which is kind of handy. This video is going to cover just the noon and various occasions uh, that require or make the noon disappear and the traces that the noon leaves when it does. So, uh, in this, for the assimilated noon, in certain situations, the noon will curl up into a little ball, like, uh, like a roly-poly bug, because it's claustrophobic, and it will go in one of two directions. Either it will assimilate into the next letter, or it will be rejected and will lengthen the previous letter, usually from a hyric to atzere. Those are the two traces. Let me talk about the first one first. The first trace that the noon leaves when it disappears is that it assimilates into the following root letter, or it puts a doggish forte in the next root letter. It does that in three different uh, occasions, on three different occasions. The first is when it's the first root letter in uh, a shorish. Here we have noon pei lamed. Now, if we have noon pei lamed in an imperfect form, let's say third masculine singular uh, pa'al imperfect, that form is ye pole, ye pole. Now the noon disappears because it gets claustrophobic when the, the prefix comes on the other end of it. So. What it does is it becomes a doggish forte in the pay. So you see a doggish forte in the first visible root letter. You know, on, you, you have a pretty good chance that the first root letter is noon and it's assimilated into the pay. Another occasion in which the noon will assimilate is when you have a nifal imperfect or perhaps an infinitive or um, uh, any number of other forms. Vav consecutive. Uh, in this situation, let's put the nifal uh, nishbar, let's put that into a prefix. It, you would think it would be yod nun shin bait resh, but it's not. It's yod shin bait resh. Yi shaver. Yi shaver. So the nun, you see it there in the shin as a dogish forte. The third occasion in which the noon can assimilate is with the preposition mean. There are other uh, possibilities, but th these are three common occasions in which it does so. When you have the, the preposition mean attaching to another word and the first letter is not a guttural, then the noon will assimilate. This is a, a familiar word from Jonah. Me leaf ne. Me, you see the doggish there, leaf, nay, me leaf nay. So uh, this one here, uh, ye pole is is uh, he will fall, uh, and ye shaver is is he or it will be broken to pieces. And here mean is away or from leaf nay is to the face or presence. Uh, me leaf ne is away from or away from the presence. Now, it's called the assimilated noon because when uh, the noon goes into the next letter as a doggish forte, the doggish forte is a doubling doggish. And uh, just like in culture, when someone enters a new culture, and they assimilate into the culture. Once they've assimilated, they're indistinguishable from the others in the culture. It's the same way with the noon. When it assimilates into the next root letter, 
it becomes the next root letter. So instead of being a noon, now it's a lamid or a sheen or a pay. You might say to the noon, resistance is futile. You will assimilate. Sorry. So uh, it works the same way in English, actually. Uh, if you have, uh, let's take the word uh, immature. In root form, it's in and mature. In meaning not and mature. If you put those two together, you have immature. Same with illegal or illogical or immigration. Any of these uh, words, it works the same way in English that the, the, the N becomes the next letter, just like the noon does in Hebrew. It becomes the next letter when it assimilates. So there's one other occasion in which the, the noon will disappear and will leave a trace of its disappearance. And that is when the letter that follows the noon is a guttural. So here are a couple of similar situations as above. Here we have the preposition mean uh, connected to the word ein, which is the question word where. Uh, when that happens, switch my color here. We have not, uh, not me ein because the noon can't assimilate into the aleph because the aleph is a guttural and gutturals reject assimilated noons. The, the, the dot that the noon has rolled itself up into is rejected by the aleph and it lengthens the hiric to a tsere. You might say it tsererizes the hiric. So, me ein, me ein, from where? From where? Me ein tavo is what the sailors ask Jonah in chapter one. From where are you coming? And when you have a nephal uh, verb where the first root letter is a guttural, that guttural resh here will reject the dagish in the imperfect. So then you get. Uh, actually, let me make this a tav. The dagish lene there. Te ra a. Te ra a. This is a form from Genesis 1. Um, it will appear, talking about the land. It will be seen. And so the hierarch here that you would expect um, under the prefix of the nephal is rejected and it's lengthened or tsererized. Um, by the rejected dagish. Uh, this is one of the common missing letter clues uh, that's um, in the textbook and uh, something to keep in mind. How the noon, the traces that the noon leaves when it disappears. Lech le shalom.